Welcome back. This is Ryan Thompson with Pyro CMS. In our previous video, we um, got a, a vanilla installation going for this new project. And um, in this video, we're going to create a new theme and scaffold that theme based on our, um, our project's build files. So it used to be that I would get... Uh, I, I would do the front end and the back end build and I do them kind of simultaneously and it was a weird process for our team because for one it was very blocking um, and I ended up coming to the conclusion I'm not really that good at front end development and so I was slow um, I was too attention oriented like detail oriented when it came to making decisions and stuff I just wasn't wasn't that good at it really um, compared to someone who who might specialize in it so we have a, a, a developer who specializes in front-end builds uh, build this out. They use um, you know whatever compilers they want. The only thing that we ask them is to group all of their source files and stuff together. And the structure that we've got here um, is very similar to something that you could, you could download off of ThemeForest, for example. Um, you can do this with anything, but um, we're th this, this particular build, um, I have to get a hold of the uh, our guys and, and fix some things because the way that's developed right now is um, assuming that we're going to use aesthetic with Pyro and let Pyro compile our assets, um, and we're shifting away from that into using Laravel Mix, and that's how our themes are scaffolded now to use Mix out of the box. So in this video, we're also going to look at kind of retrofitting a little bit, kind of taking something that. Um, maybe like an HTML theme, like you again get off of ThemeForest, and retrofitting it for Pyro, and making sure that it fits within uh, Mix, so that we can make and deploy changes very easily. So um, after that, we're going to create a template, um, a page type for the home page, and we're going to get our default theme layout wired up, um, and um, We'll get into that here in a moment. So first thing we want to do is create a theme. And to do that, I am in our project root. I use PHP artisan make add-on. I'm just going to call it group. That theme that group. And this is going to create a theme for us. Generic bootstrap four using mix ready to go. Um, so let's uh, enable that real quick in settings. The group theme and go to our front end. And here it is. So I want this to look like this eventually. So first things first is I'm gonna start taking the assets um, that they ship to us and the JavaScript and whatnot and getting that moved into into place and then we'll revisit the uh, the template. So let's get started. Under add-ons we've got a new theme. Let's open up our mix. I'm just going to disable some of the stuff for now. This is what I'd like to change in the future so that we can have a mix file, for example. And I can just copy over the mix file here and get started instead of some of this manual moving around. Um, that's one of the improvements that, that I need to work with our team on. I'm just going to remove all of these first. Because I am going to have mix compile, but I'm not going to use um, npm to manage packages for this particular project but you'd be able to do that here it's just like a normal uh, you know mix based package list here so let's get started let's see I'm gonna open this up so this is the home page template that they gave us and I'm gonna start collapsing some of the stuff We've got a phone menu, wrapper, testimonial block. And we have them block these things out on purpose so that it's just easy to cut out and integrate into blocks. 
So first things first, maybe the footer. I've got a few things. What's the footer bottom? I have a feeling it's this. Uh, I'm going to attach this. Footer part, footer bottom, yeah, it's that purple dealy. So we'll probably want all of that in the same. I'm going to put that in a different partial. So stuff like this, I'm just going to put into a new partial. And these are all going to need to be replaced. Uh, so we'll replace these with our image tag. Okay. It's okay for now. We'll take our footer. I'm going to put the bottom piece here into the footer partial as well. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Take the copyright portion here, put it under the footer. I'm going to take this from our generic theme and use it here. Okay, open up our default layout, and I've got our footer here. I'm going to put the bottom just above that. Might need to move it later, I don't know. Um, I do not like putting uh, this block content here is where all of the page or otherwise content that's being injected into this layout is going to be put. I don't like wrapping it in containers because I like to have the page or the block dictate its container because you can easily have a container of uh, what you see is what you get content followed by maybe a full width gallery type block. So I like to keep it without uh, outside of the container there. Okay, let's look at the header now. We've got a top bar, header top. Let's go back to our template file. I'm just going to pull that out if I can. Uh, let's pull out the, the mobile menu. Um, we don't dictate any of the stuff. We just let them build as they wish. So um, we'll come through and fix these images in a little bit. I just want to get things moved around for now. I, I, I'll, let's do it now. This has its own class. So that one's done. Right. We'll leave these navigation pieces for now. We'll come back through and remove those or make them live basically with tags later. Same thing with this uh, this variable information like phone numbers. Those will all end up going into variables. I just want to get things moved around for now. Uh, no need there. No. Um, let's go ahead and do it now. So for a lot of the global stuff like phone numbers, um, what else would be a good one? Social information, hours maybe. Hours is probably going to be another good one. I like to use variables. So let's go into our variables and create some fields. 
URL. Let's do Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, phone number. Um, let's do that. Make a couple groups. I use I usually use a social group. Usually use a general. Let's assign our phone to general. No need to make it required or anything. And then let's assign our Facebook and Instagram to the social. And I'm using uh, Shift Command S to save and create new. There would be. Let's copy their phone number and stuff in real quick. Like now. Nope. Uh, our content team can do that. I don't really care. All right. So now we want to use our variable here. Actually, yeah. Use that. We'll do the same thing here. Yeah, I think it was in the footer as well. We have a fax number, perfect. So let's create a fax too. And assign it. And we'll assign, uh, we'll put our value in there so we don't forget it. There's a presenter value or a presenter method too that I like to use when possible. Um, and that would look like something like this. We don't want just the raw value. <clears throat> we would return the field and then do something like this. And that would use that would make this uh, this tell link, but it's easier sometimes to just do it separately if there's extra icons or or text incorporated. Uh, let's do hours real quick too. Uh, we should have done address as well. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, I want the address at the top. So let's put their address in here. Okay, and then same for their hours. And we want to retain those break lines, so we're going to use N, uh, was it new line to break line, or new line to break, whatever, and L2BR. Uh, so we're going to use our raw value, general hours nl2br we're going to do the same for the address after hours let's add a field for that and i'm using um variables here because they're global it's not going to be page specific so these are global variables that we need after hours whatever More on Ipsum, content team can handle that. Um, we've got some mini links down here too. Let's see, quick links. Ah, uh, yes, our social stuff. So we're gonna use the social group. Uh, I want the actual presenter. I want the, the, the field type, so I'm going to use variable instead, instead of variable value, which is just the raw value. Social, this is Facebook. Not that we need to, but it's always good to. Alt All right. Let's get these footer links real quick. This is just a basic quick links. Yeah, this is just like a basic little thing. So I'm going to make its own navigation group. So let's go over to the navigation module. New menu. Ooh, footer. I like footer. Yeah, that's fine. This one's this one's seated with uh, the default installation, so we'll remove the seated information. Create a new link. These can be changed to page later. Save and create another. I'm just going to loop over these. We don't support nesting here for link in. This is a plugin from the navigation module. Links and the footer group. That's the slug. That's the slug here. Let's see if I can remember. Link dot title. Link URL. And the target. Image. 
does not exist. Group color center. Oh, I need to move in. I need to move in our images. So this is the, the build that we got back. I'm going to open up this project and my finder. Uh, we need to move in all this stuff. Let's start with images though. There we go. So it's all busted, but we do have what we're looking for. Social. All of our variables are coming in. Everything else is busted. Perfect. I think this partial is pretty well replaced. So we go back to our, uh, our template file here that we were working with. That's done, that's done. Uh, testimonial block. Let's, I think this might be something that's global. I'm not sure though. So that's starting to get into the actual page and I don't want to, I don't want to go there just yet. So in the head, let's see what we've got up here. We'll pull one in. Images favicon. So let's open up our metadata.twig. This is the one that's generated for us. Let's go ahead and use that. Um, I'm going to move in the rest of their resources now to at least their CSS or SCSS. I'm going to replace the one that we've got. So I've got my primary styles up at top, and I want, uh, let's see, let's open up mix. And I want to do bootstrap as well. I want to run the watch and make sure I can export the files. Out. I want to make sure that this works real quick. So add-ons, default, group, group theme. Let's see what happens. Huh. You have to install first, maybe. So in the future, what I would like to do is have these projects already set up to use uh, a mix file as well as a package.json file so that I can copy these in and retain more structure and more shared workflow with our front-end developers. I have a feeling it's probably something similar to what they're using already, but uh, we won't be far off, which is nice. See if we can do this just yet. Okay. Can't resolve. Ah, right because it's in its own folder. Let's try again. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong here? Resources, so CSS, bootstrap. I don't need that one. Yeah, this process needs cleaned up for sure. As far as our workflow goes. On the next project, hopefully we have this sorted out. There we go. 
So our theme file is pulling in Bootstrap as it is, as well as Font Awesome. So I'm just going to leave all that stuff, and I'm only going to make one output file, which is our theme one. So in our metadata, I can get rid of that. I'm going to bring in CSS there. Just call it all theme. Uh, this brings in includes that should be left contents. We need to leave that. I think that'll look all right. Let's clear assets and take a look at it. Cool. So we're pulling on styles correctly. So now we can continue with um, more of the HTML markup and let's do the header first. You can see we're already getting the default seated page uh, injected into our layout like we should. So that's awesome. Um, let's real quick address the assets partial. This is another one that comes with um, like out of the box and it's put, um, it's deferred. So it's going to be one of the last things on your page. Let's just, I'm not using view. Uh, let's pull in their scripts here. I don't think we've done that yet. So copy from the build that I was delivered into what we have. Replace <clears throat> jQuery, jQuery. So let's do something like this. We'll need jQuery first. Last. That's their initialize kind of stuff. Fancy box, flex slider. Let's throw slick in there. Okay, so we've all added these to our theme.js collection, and I'm just going to output a single script. And then these things are more for supporting field types that might add a script at some point. So if we render a form, and some of those inputs need a script to work, these will all those are all typically put in the scripts.js or styles.css for for styling um, collection, and we'll loop through those. And it uh, looks like we're we're displaying those in line. So I think that should be okay. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it breaks anything. Cool. Let's look at our inspector. We've got a couple issues, but I guess. Let's fix that real quick. We've got a couple four fours down here. Um, that's the other thing. So I do have to go through some of these files and replace them. So let's do that. Let's replace the file, our uh, image locations in our build files here. Open up all the pages. And we'll work through these. Not sure how to get around this one as far as our, our workflow. Luckily it doesn't take long.
Okay. Only one in that file. a number of them here. I wonder if there's some sort of way to rewrite these URLs programmatically. That'd be pretty sick. With like a a package or something like that. Ideas in the comments. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think that was my first plug for comments ever in a video. I'm like a professional YouTuber. Almost done. Yeah, I'll bet because one of the things we do by default is not processing CSS URLs. And I think that's something that could be done, it sounds like, with a plugin somehow. So I'm super keen on learning how to do that. Because it's part of the, it, it doesn't suck, but it kind of sucks. There's better things to be doing, more productive things. And we have to do this because our assets need to be pushed to the public directory. And that's part of what the image system does, as well as applying any manipulation that we might want. For the love of God. how much recorded video I'll have at the end of this project. Might be a testament to how fast things can be done. Oops. Last one, last file. Okay. All right, I think that's it. out.
for good measure. Let's see if we can need breaking. Yep. So now we just need to real quick find where that is. Theme images phone icon. Okay, all right, now let's get started on the header. So we're gonna open up our build file index, uh, just the home page there. Uh, we've got our metadata in for the most part. We've got our footer, we've got our phone, uh, their, their mobile menu in as mobile.twig. So let's get into the wrapper. Got a header. Banner. I have a feeling that it's probably just the header and the banner that are the uh, static components. So let's look at the build file here. Header. Nope. So it's just the header. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to take that and slap it in here. We'll replace the navigation. Usually like to keep navigation separate. We don't have to, but it's whatever. There's no images in here. Here's one. And these alt tags, if they were coming from anywhere else but the theme, uh, it'll default them. But it, the alt tag would default to like logo, for example. And if they were coming from the files module or something along those lines, we could set the alt text um, from the files module too, and we wouldn't have to do this kind of thing, but replace that. Here's another one. Oops. Uh, we'll leave this otherwise intact as is. So it's a search form. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Looks like probably some fonts. Yep, so these might be able to be fixed a little easier. So we're going to basically do the same gist with these that we did before, except where we want the asset path. And then we get rid of that because we'll have our own timestamp by default. Our, our assets are versioned, so the, the path that's returned from here will already include a timestamp. We'll do the same thing over here. Cut. So you can see, we can easily do this with any theme, but there are some tools. 
uh, some some formatting that could be done to make this particularly easier for us as pyro developers in a in a team atmosphere. So many fonts. See what we have. jQuery has always given me issues. What I think I'm going to do. I hate jQuery. I'm actually just going to leave that for now. We'll follow up with that in a little bit. Don't particularly care to fix it at this moment. So, what we've done now is essentially uh, injected live variables so we can control some of these global template items uh, the navigation let's go ahead and um, replace that as well let's make sure that this phone number is live I'm just going to copy and paste from here Phone number. Phone number. What else here? Search. We'll hook that up later. Um, this top navigation. Let's go ahead and hook that up. We'll figure it out. Uh, we gotta have my container portal login. I'm just gonna do one or two. And let's open up. That's right here. So we can use a pretty generic method here too, similar as we did in the footer for link and links in the top bar menu um, the title If the loop, and this is a twig variable, if not, auto format. There. Got that. Phone's hooked up. Contact location. So, something that I like doing for static links is again back in variables actually let's see yeah I'm gonna create a relationship call it contact pane 
top left. Yeah. It's related to pages. Look up. I'm going to create a new group. So this way we can define what what this button points to globally in case it needs to change so we can easily do that. There might be some others that use this but I think this is the only call out that we'll probably need as far as consistently calling out a link that needs to be uh, like immutable. We could do it with a page route name but that would if it, if it, if the page changes then the route name and the code would need to be changed and for this particular use case I think a variable would be better suited uh, so links ah groups links assignments So now the content team, I'll, I'll document this and they can hook this up as, as desired. And then from here, contact location section within the header, what I can do, variable, what I call like group links. And this will return the object, not the raw value, because it's a relation. And we'll turn its view route. And I think we have a seated contact page, so I'll show you how that works. There we go. All right, I think that wraps up this video. In the next video, we're going to start working on the home page page type. And then after that, we will get into scaffolding the rest of the pages using probably blocks and streams. So stay tuned. Catch you later.